Medtronic Technologies impacted more than 72 million people in the last year, equating to two people every second. Harnessing the power of technology to take healthcare further, each technology has unique benefits designed to serve patients. The goal of this program is to get closer to the patient and to delve into the challenges and impact each technology has in practice. This is the Medtronic MedEd learning experience. The BIS monitoring system should not be used as the sole basis for diagnosis or therapy and is intended only as an adjunct in patient assessment. Reliance on BIS system alone for intraoperative anesthetic management is not recommended. Medtronic's medical education programs are offered to provide attendees education on the FDA cleared indications and use of our products when applicable. The contents and conclusions of the following program are solely those of the speakers unless otherwise cited. The speakers are responsible for all content and any necessary permissions. The speakers received funding from Covidian LP, a Medtronic company, for the speaking engagement. For this segment of the series, A Discussion on Anesthesia in the Brain, we will discuss Fourier Theorem and how it can help us understand EEG. To help provide insight into this is Dr. Bob Thiele, Assistant Professor and Co-Director Enhanced Recovery After Surgery Program at the University of Virginia. So this, to, to understand bispatural index or process EEG um, and the compressed spectral array, I think we do have to spend a little time talking about math, which may make everybody groan, but bear with me on this. Um, Fourier's theorem basically says that any physiologic waveform can reprodu be reproduced by a series of sine waves. So on that top right, what I have here is a blood pressure tracing from the femoral artery of a dog in an animal experiment. And that light blue line is the actual blood pressure tracing. On the bottom left, what you see is different sine waves that if you add them up together, will accurately reproduce the blood pressure tracing in the dog. And so what you, the, the on the top right, the dark blue is what we call the first harmonic. So the heart rate of the dog is about 100 beats per minute or 1.6 hertz. So this is the first harmonic. The second harmonic, that's a wave sine wave that oscillates at twice the frequency of the first harmonic. So it's oscillating at 3.2 hertz, which you see in the bottom left in red. If you add the first and second harmonic, you get this red squiggly line on the top right. And as you keep adding the harmonics, which are these sine waves that make up the blood pressure waveform, that you get a tracing that looks more and more like the actual blood pressure tracing. And you could do that with blood pressure tracing. You can do that with EKG signals. You can do that with EEG signals. Every physiologic signal can be broken down into a group of sine waves that when you add them up with different frequencies, amplitudes, and phase will actually recreate the original waveform. Now, why is that important? It has a lot to do with the patterns that you see when you look at EEG, in particularly that compressed spectral array that I talked about, the colored map that I showed earlier, and we're going to talk about how that's derived. But when you look at this blood pressure tracing on the top right, that's displaying a waveform in the time domain. So amplitude on the y-axis and time on the x-axis. Another way to describe any waveform is in what's called the frequency domain. And as I mentioned, any waveform can be, can be recreated with a series of sine waves. And so on the bottom right, you actually have this blood pressure tracing in the frequency domain. And so what I have here is on the x-axis, it's frequency, and on the y-axis is amplitude. So what this means is that a 1.6 hertz waveform with an amplitude of 0.34, if I add that to a 3.2 hertz waveform with an amplitude of 0.07, that's in red, that's the second harmonic. And then the third harmonic is at about 4.8 hertz, and that's really small at 0.03, for the amplitude, if I add those up, that actually recreates this blood pressure tracing. So it's a different way to describe a waveform. Now, this is an example of describing a human blood pressure tracing in the frequency domain. So on the top, you have a blood pressure tracing in the time domain. X-axis is time, 
y axis is amplitude. On the bottom here, what you have is that same waveform described in the frequency domain. So I've broken it down into side waves and the heart rate is about 70 beats per minute. So 1.1 and 1.2 Hertz, that's this fundamental frequency. And then the second harmonic is at 2.2 Hertz and third harmonics at 3.5 Hertz. And if you add all that up, you will recreate this waveform at the top. And what's interesting here is that there's this little spike at 0.2 Hertz. That's the low frequency oscillation that occurs with mechanical ventilation. So you can get a lot of information about a waveform by looking at it in the frequency domain and things might pop out at you that would not be obvious when you look at it under the time domain. And that's true whether you're talking about blood pressure or EEG. So on the top right, what we have here is an EEG waveform displayed in the frequency domain. So instead of just squiggly lines going through time, we have frequencies on the x-axis and we have the power or amplitude on the y-axis. Now, on the bottom left here, you see a plot of a waveform over time or a frequency spectrum over time. And what I've done and what many software programs can do is color code this so that higher amplitudes are brighter. What that allows you to do is actually to describe three dimensions using only a two dimensional space. So if you look on the right, what you see is now you have time on the X axis, you have frequency on the Y axis and the intensity of the waveform at individual frequencies is denoted by the color. So yellow is high intensity or bright and blue is no intensity, not bright. Please tune in next week for a new segment from this series wherever you find your podcast. This is the Medtronic MedEd Learning Experience. Thank you for listening.